Well, this is all very fam familiar as I sit around here and I've got Bayon's big chair beside me. I mean, this was on the set. So these are original, um, original props and, uh, you know, some of the set construction that we brought over from New Zealand for this event. So normally we have it stored away in warehouses because I never throw anything away. So um, it's heading back to New Zealand as soon as this is finished. Paradise is always um, a favourite for film crews. I mean, quite a few movies have shot in Paradise and I've shot there, Lord of the Rings, uh, Lovely Bones, we shot some sequences in Paradise. It's a, it's a very, um, very film-friendly place. It just felt like, a, you know, to, to actually build a, a set rather than in a studio, you build it in a location, you get all that amazing vista and the view. Yeah, we wanted a lake that was surrounded by mountains that had a good, you know, um, view. But we also had to be reasonably close to, to, a, to a city or a town because we needed accommodation for everybody. We were going to have to have a large number of extras. And so, you know, th th there is a lot of different factors that you have to weigh in. You know, you're looking up the lake and you've got Mount Cook uh, right at the end of the lake. It's a pretty incredible view, amazing view. Polaris, um, it, it, it's, it's interesting again because we had to have dwarves floating in barrels. So we had to have somewhere w which is quite deep. And I wanted some rocks. I wanted a sort of a really, a kind of a really fantastical looking environment around the river. So I had seen Polaris when I was with my parents when I was about um, seven or eight years old. We had gone on a, on a driving tour around New Zealand. And I remember standing on that thinking, wow, this would be such an amazing um, um, place for, for, for like for, for skeletons to fight or for the sort of things I was seeing in these movies. And, um, and I always had it logged in the back of my mind. And you know, Tolkien wrote, the, wrote this, these books, and, and, and Tolkien is very, um, he, he's very vivid in the way he describes landscapes. You know, in, 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 in these books, the, the landscape and the environment and even the weather and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, um, the heather or the moss or the grass is like described in, in, in um, quite loving detail in the books. And so you come away with a strong sense of landscape having read the books. And, and, and so, for us, that was always a, an important factor in the movies. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I am proud. I, I, you know, it's um, it's one of the one of the the, the, the the little side benefits that you get from the film industry. It's an interesting industry because you, 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 it has a lot of offshoots outside of the actual movie that you're making. It has a lot of benefits for um, for the economy, for local economies. Um, and especially with something like these movies, they, they generate tourism. You know, there's, you know, I can't really think of any other industry, in any industry that has the, the reach and, uh, and the depth. It's, it's interesting because Tolkien wrote, that, wrote, wrote these books. He created the mythology. He actually said in some of the letters he wrote, he said that, that mythologies should be built on and um, adapted by other people in other me mediums. He kind of, you know, it's like that's what mythology is. It expands. It completely develops. And now New, New Zealand has played its role in the mythology of Middle Earth, and uh, will, and it will always be there. Yeah.